everybody, I'm Einar the Bangus, and welcome to Puppet Vikings. In this show today, we are going to talk about making a null bending needle. There's lots of examples. We have a, we have a bone one, and a very large wooden one, and a small wooden one. We'll explain more as you watch the making. Over to the workshop. So we will start with some of the materials you can use to make one. That is ash, it is a type of wood. That is plum, it is also a type of wood. That is an antler. And those are bones. As you can see there, we have two different lengths of bone. That first one is one we bought from a pet shop. It's supposed to be a dog chew. Uh, it came with a filling. But the dog enjoyed the filling and we're using the bone. It is a pre-sterilized bone, which means that it's nice and safe to use. No icky bacteria. That one is a marrow bone. We bought that from a butcher's. So we had to clean that and boil it up ourselves. That piece at the back is the color it was. Buying from a butcher's means you can get longer pieces of bone, which means you can make longer needles. This is the large wooden one. This video is shot in a uh, slightly speeded up time. Now we're using a slither of ash that we chopped out of that block you saw at the beginning with an axe. And then we're taking that reciprocating saw and just cutting it down quickly. And we're using a belt sander to clean it all up. I mean, you can do the whole thing with a knife, but seasoned ash is quite tough. As you see in the little tiny sub video there, there are the needles we saw at the Jorvik Center. This one's being roughly based on those. The size of it, we assume that this is a textile one for use with the loom, so you can feed it in and out of the um, warp threads to put a pattern in. Uh, personally, we use those for um, net repair because it goes in and out of the net holes quite easily. But I guess you make your null bending needles to what you need them for. I really just want to call this one a needle or possibly a shuttle. couple of burrs that the sander wasn't tackling very well. You do have to make them incredibly smooth, otherwise they will snag on the wool as it goes through and then that just ruins what you're making. You don't have a pointed tip, you just have a little round one. Ash is a very, very tough wood when it's seasoned. That's why it gets used a lot. And as you'll see, it gives it a bit of a flex and it doesn't break. You should be wearing a mask when you're working with a sander, but it is very important when working with bone. I mean, even here, you can see all of that bone dust has been thrown up. Those are the tiny needles from Jorvik. We're making something similar to the one at the top. When working with bone, you'll notice it has solid and porous sections. Porous is the little holes. You want to get rid of that part when making needles because it has no strength to it. You'll see he's using a cup in a minute, which has got water in it. It's not to keep the actual dust down, but it does help it's because the bone itself gets hot as you are working it on the sander and you cool it down. Having the bone not wet makes it easier for the blade to cut through. It sort of softens the material. Needles do come in various shapes and sizes. Mostly you get round ones and you get flat ones. 
but it's really all down to what you're going to use it for and the actual person who's going to be using it. So it's best to talk with your knob binding person to find out exactly the shape and style they would like to use before you go and make something that's no good for them. Here's the last one of our speed it up videos. In this one, we're using plum. It's a fruit wood, so it's non-toxic. The amount of people I've seen doing knoll bending who hold the needles in their mouth, who just don't want to use something like you. Because it's fruit wood, it's also quite soft. So it has a bit of flex to it and you can do a lot of the work with a knife but we're going to switch over to the power sander just to get it done quickly plus it makes short work of all of those knots and burrs in the wood And that's it. That's how quickly you can make one. Just going to file the hole out. As with all wooden projects, if you want it to last, you've got to coat it in something. So a bit of beeswax. And that will shine up nicely and last you for a while. Stay tuned, because we're going to have a short video on how to make a null bending needle out of a lollipop, well, a lollipop stick. It's a great way of recycling little bits of wood. How to make a null bending needle from a lollipop stick. First, you get a lollipop. Mmm, tasty. Then, you eat said lollipop. This one, I believe, is banana and lime. Possibly with toffee and sprinkles. But that doesn't matter. Any lollipop will do, as long as it has a stick. Or, you can just get a stick. But this way, you get the treat of the lollipop as well. Mmm, really could do with a lollipop right now, yummy. It's almost done. Here we go, eating a lollipop in real time. Now we have a stick. There we have our stick. We shall cut it in two using the sander. This way we have two small pieces of wood which we can use to make two small knob bending needles. We're using the sander because well, we have it to hand. But you can do the whole thing with a small cutting knife. Of course, it's just an oil pop stick. It's quite nice wood for carving with to make disposable objects. This particular video is being shot in real time, so you can just see how fast it could be to make one. It's ideal as your first type. 
plus you're reselecting a piece of wood. Two quick needles, roughly made, and now we'll go on putting the hole in it. In the case of this one, we're just going to take the engraver. It's the same routering bit we use for carving into the bone. It's just enough to make a hole all the way through. Now you've drilled the holes, get an oil piece of sandpaper and just finish off cleaning up the edges so there's nothing to snag. The higher the grit sandpaper, the smoother the finish. And now we're going to use a file just to clean out the inside hole and give it a bit of beveling. And that's it really. A couple of quick lollipop owl bending needles. Ta-da! So oh, here are our finished needles. We have the big wooden one made of ash, the long thin one which is bone, and two little ones made of plum. Now this lady is going to demonstrate some gnarl bending for us using our bone needle. She's using what's called Oslo stitch, and a nice colourful wool, so you can actually see it in action. We will in another video go through how to actually do knoll bending. Maybe show the workings of a hat or a sock or possibly mittens. As we're nearing closer to winter, mittens are a good thing to have. There's a Viking story about a mitten. Well, the main story is actually about Thor and Loki, but they go to camp in what they think is a cave, one little side room, and in the morning it turns out that it's a mitten that belongs to a giant who just happened to be leaving on the floor. I like that story. It's quite mesmerizing watching the knoll bending. Very relaxing. Well, I hope that was informative. If you enjoyed, please do press like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye.